Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing the glow up in makeup tag. This tag was created by Kelsey Brianna Jai. I was actually in my subscription feed and I saw that Mel Thompson did this tag and I was curious as to who actually created it and I found Kelsey and I'm kind of like rabbit holing into her channel at the moment so I'm really fascinated by her content and this tag is actually a pretty great one and I thought I might do it myself. This tag is called the glow up and beauty tag and if you don't know what a glow up is it's a slang term for a transformation for the better this is specifically a glow up in beauty tag focusing on the uh, good sides and the bad sides of one's makeup journey the questions are quite fascinating I'll put them all in the description box so you can check them out but uh, yeah this is gonna be a that tag video for today so let's just get into it the first question is, what is the worst beauty advice that you've ever gotten? I'm pretty sure I have so many examples of just bad beauty advice that I have been on the receiving end of. Um, I definitely say that people have their own opinions about what makeup should be. Now, strangely enough, when you find yourself wearing makeup a lot or wearing like a above average amount of makeup, a lot of people seem to really want to give you advice on how you should do your makeup. And I do remember when I was first getting into makeup um, that I would read all these like advice cards columns and magazines and just on the internet and I would be uh, watching like the infancy of beauty YouTube and you would be getting a lot of advice from that avenue as well but uh, the worst beauty advice that I've ever gotten that comes to mind right now is that you have to choose between a bold lip and a bold eye and you have to pair one of the two down so for example if you're doing like a really dramatic eye or like a dramatic eye you should be doing a nude lip to balance it out and vice versa if you're doing a really bold lip you should be doing like an almost completely bare eye now this was actually really prevalent when i was first starting out in makeup a lot of makeup artists would say this nowadays i don't think that they're saying this as much but this whole idea of having balance in the sense that you had to pick one feature to accentuate like really vividly and that was it it didn't really make much sense to me and that's why i always found myself going for like the really dramatic eye and the really nude lip because i was like okay, I love eyes, um, so I have to have a very nude lip because I love eyes so much, but I can't play up both because that's bad, you know. But anyway, that's why I actually strayed away from bold lips when I was first getting into makeup. Nowadays, you guys know, like, I love bold lips, bold eyes, any of the day of the week by themselves combined. I love playing around with it, but that's definitely some pretty bad advice that I got. I think it's ridiculous to have to um, attach such like a... I would say weird rule to make up. Uh, I just don't get it. The next question is, what is the worst beauty advice that you've ever given? Oof. Um, oh my gosh, this is actually kind of embarrassing. I would say like about two years ago when I was like first getting to grips with my channel, uh, when I was really just like experimenting with things, I found out that uh, wearing glitter on your eyelids was like the best thing ever. I thought it was super fun, super amazing, and I talked about it on my channel. However, what I did was I used craft glitter. I distinctly remember going into a craft store and getting like little packets of glitter and being like, yeah, I want to put this on my eyelids. And for a time, I did, I did several looks with glitter on my eyelids and that was craft glitter. Now, using craft glitter on your eyelids is just really, like it's a really bad idea. Thank goodness I had a pretty strong lash glue to use, but in general, wearing craft glitter on your eyes or wearing glitter that is not eye safe on your eyelids is not necessarily the best thing at all. An eye safe glitter is supposed to stick very well to your eyelids. It's supposed to have a certain shape so it doesn't damage your eye, your, like your actual eye. And wearing craft, craft glitter, thank goodness I only like wore like the big chunky ones, but it's just, it's just not a good thing. And the fact that I was um, basically showing that on my channel, the fact that I was conveying that I was wearing glitter in this way in my videos is definitely really like just cringy to me and in the worst way because I feel like whenever somebody puts something up online they have a responsibility to make sure that it's something that is not harmful and 
I'm just like so thankful that I didn't have a lot of people watching me at, a at that time because it would have like because I would have been partially responsible for I guess some damage and I don't want that at all I don't want my channel to be that at all so what I ended up doing is as soon as I found out that that was horrible advice I basically took all of those videos down um, and yeah and then I mentioned it in a video I was like don't use craft glitter don't be don't be me basically I'm very glad that I finally realized that but it's kind of obvious looking back but like back then I was <laughs> I was a lot less I would say aware of anything so yeah number three what beauty product did you struggle with the most slash what is your worst experience with a product oof um this was like a foundation that i had gotten like super cheap and i'm not saying the cheap makeup is bad on the contrary i think that you can find a lot of really great and expensive makeup that performs better if not um the same way as really expensive makeup but i remember getting a foundation that was like less than five dollars and i think i got it at like a dollar store or something and i put it on my face and it was like so it was so thick it was so gunky and it emphasized so much on my face it emphasized pores i didn't know i had it was thick it was greasy it was just bad but that is like the worst product I've ever tried and I remember like I couldn't make it work because it was so thick and I have oily skin and it literally just like emphasized so much so much texture didn't blend out at all it was so bad um but yeah that's like the worst memory that I have with a product I would love actually to maybe do like a little bit of like an ongoing theme on my channel in which we uh go ahead and we try really inexpensive makeup like makeup that is like the lo lowest price drugstore makeup ever because I already have so many amazing products that are like under five dollars that I love so much but I want to find more so that's definitely a video idea that I will be delving into in the future but Moving forward, number four, what beauty product did you use to use a lot back in the day but would never use now? Um, hmm. I would say concealer. I mean, like, okay, I'm not sure if you can see bug. I definitely have texture on my face. My face has never been perfect ever since I hit puberty, and um, I don't expect my face to be perfect moving forward whatsoever but definitely when i was first getting into makeup i would wear a lot of concealer and i would have concealer like uh here to ex to accentuate my baking i would have concealer underneath my eyes and that triangle i'd also have concealer um, on my nose on my chin i think on my cupid's bow at some point and on top of that i would have concealer on my different blemishes now for me I can remember some formulas that I absolutely loved back then and I still think that they would hold up right now but concealer in general is not something that I use anymore because in my mind concealer works like really great whenever you use foundation and for me like I have some foundations that I am currently working through but as many of you already know I don't wear foundation on a day-to-day -day basis I just don't like wearing it I prefer to have like no foundation on my skin whatsoever and if I do wear foundation I wear a little bit because I'm into because I'm really into that sheer healthy looking coverage you know I don't want anything that's gonna like look like his foundation on my skin you know what I mean and I also want like my imperfections to shine through because I feel like that way my makeup looks even more effortless if that makes any sense but yeah like I just don't use concealer because if I ever do need some sort of a concealing product there are so many foundations that are that I have in my collection that double as concealers and I am aware that some foundations or some concealers are completely different formulas but in my mind if you have a foundation that really matches your skin tone and that has like a little bit of like a, a slightly thicker but not overwhelm overwhelmingly thick consistency and if you have something that will set and that won't budge that can easily double as a concealer and that's what i pretty much do so i can't remember the last time I bought a concealer and I don't really see myself buying concealer or using concealer um, much at all moving forward. Maybe this will change, I don't know, never say never, but at the moment that's just how I am. Number five, what makeup technique did you struggle with the most when first learning how to do makeup? I'm gonna say several. 
Oh my gosh, okay, the first makeup technique that I struggled with would definitely be applying false lashes. I remember wanting to apply false lashes well so badly. I just really wanted to have that false lash effect and it seemed that no matter how hard I tried, it would always look bad. And um, yeah, that changed because I'm wearing false lashes all the time in videos now. But yeah, like it just, honestly, it just took practice and practice and practice. Like, it sounds like a cliche, but when you have like a makeup technique that you don't really know how to do and if you're having trouble with it, don't wait until like a special occasion to try and master that technique. Literally practice at it all the time whenever you can. Um, practice at like a certain technique before you remove your makeup for the night. But um, honestly like me practicing false lashes and really working at it and really working on that technique is the reason that I'm able to apply false lashes today. And same thing goes for another technique that I really struggled with which was winged liner. Now um, a lot of you guys have heard me mention how winged liner is something that I have like struggled with it's definitely something that i haven't been able to do that well for a long time but ever since i started wearing like winged liner like literally every single day it got a lot better like winged liner like this now takes me like about three minutes to do uh just winged liner and it's something that's kind of surreal to me because i definitely know that say um, two years ago, I would not have been able to say that. One year ago, I would not have been able to say that. Yes, I was wearing winged liner looks at that time, but it took me a long time to do, and sometimes I would never be satisfied with it, and was definitely something that I kept on struggling with. But since I practiced it, since I worked at it, I'm now able to do winged liner when I'm in a rush. And I feel like that's like a really telling sign. If you're able to do a certain makeup technique whenever you're in a rush, whenever you are on a time constraint, whenever you woke up early and you have to get somewhere, if you're able to do that technique in that kind of situation, you've mastered that technique. So I'm very proud of that. I mean, of course I'm gonna keep practicing, but wing liner and false lashes, definitely two techniques that I struggled with. But uh, now, now it's definitely better. What makeup techniques do you struggle with currently and want to improve? This is actually something that is going to sound a little bit ironic since I base a lot of my makeup looks on really dramatic eyeshadow. There's also a specific type of like um, powder formula that I'm really trying to work with whenever it comes to eyeshadows. It's that type of formula that is super high pigmented, just very, very intense and usually takes a little bit of, I would say, finessing to blend out properly. Little things like that, uh, they sound like so simple and I guess it just sounds a little bit trivial but like I'm really trying to improve in my makeup game in those little ways because I really feel like I'm confident uh, whenever it comes to so many other aspects of my makeup but eyeshadow is something that is like a never-ending uh, cycle of trying to improve trying to work at like for example I'm trying to improve my ability to blend out colors together. I'm trying to improve my ability to really work with like different formulas and it's something that sounds like I said trivial but it's still something that I'm working on and it's not anything really specific but it's definitely something that I want to work towards improving. What is a beauty product that you'd never thought you'd buy but now own? Weirdly enough, something that comes to mind like immediately would be uh, the Lemonhead LA Space Pastes. These are products that um, are a little bit expensive. I believe they go for $20 a pop. And to be honest, like I didn't actually see myself getting them. I felt like it was a little bit too expensive just for glitter and I felt like it wouldn't work out but then I got them on uh, the Black Friday sale last year or was it the Cyber Monday sale but they were on a discount and I bought them and I was like oh my gosh I can't believe I waited so long to get these. These are amazing and yes I know that that's like a little thing but um, honestly um, that's like a product that I never actually thought I would get because I didn't think it would be worth it for me but strangely enough it definitely is and I still use my two space pastes that I have like all the time to this day and I love them. What beauty trends do you regret following? Oh my goodness. 
the all matte trend. Like a few years ago, people were so into the all matte trend, be it matte liquid lipsticks, matte skin, um, but people were so into that. And I was really into it myself, like that full coverage, full matte effect. And I'm like, now I look back at photos and I'm like, oh my goodness, like what is that? Because I just like look at my skin and I was like, that was caking that stuff on. Like I was caking on makeup to such an extreme level. And I will say this right now, I am so glad that that trend is over and done with, right? It's still a little bit like present right now, at least with the full coverage aspect of it. Now it's kind of like luminous full coverage. That's where the trends are going. But for me, I'm like sheer coverage and luminous and just like realistic looking finishes you know i love like the glossy lip i love like the you know like luminous but like natural looking skin that's what i'm into um but yeah definitely the all matte trend all matte full coverage trend i don't know what what we were thinking it was just bad if you had to restart your beauty collection where are some things that you would do differently i would definitely have loved to take like a few steps back and really evaluated exactly what i was buying and really thought about whether or not a certain item added value to my collection because i feel like we are really just like i would say bamboozled by brands influencers just different personalities online who really try to persuade us that we need a certain makeup item and yes i feel like at the time i knew that but if i had realized it a little bit more and realized that i didn't need like 20 neutral palettes i didn't need so many bronzers i didn't need so many mascaras open at the same time like mascaras expire so quickly and i remember at a certain time i would have like so many mascaras open and then after three months i'd throw them away and i could have just used one mascara that i really liked you know and now i literally have like one mascara and that's it and then like i switch it out at the end of three months you know what i mean so i really feel like i would have loved to just take a few steps back and just analyze what exactly i actually wanted for my makeup collection how could i have added value to my collection and how could i have made my makeup collection into something that was really well suited for my needs what is the worst makeup look that you've ever done i don't know if this is like the worst of the worst of makeup looks that i've ever done but something that comes to mind is immediately was a makeup look that I did on myself uh, when I was really young. I forget how old I was. I'll try and uh, find the year and figure out how old I was and I'll put it on the screen right now. But I remember I was trying to do like a super cool, super like editorial kind of makeup and I basically um, ended up looking like a dried up raisin. <laughs> I remember putting like concealer on my lips because I wanted like to have like a nude lip look but I didn't really have any lipstick. And then I had like this really like just eye like interesting eyeshadow look going on. I don't know if I was wearing mascara. I don't know if I had mascara. I just like looked so dry and it looked so matte and it looked so powdered. Definitely not my best look, but one of my favorite photos to look back on because look at that and then look at that. I'm not perfect, far from it, but that's a glow up. What is the best makeup look that you've ever done? To be honest, my favorite looks that I've done have been the colorful makeup looks that I've done. Ever since I've really started experimenting, being a little bit more expressive with the way I do my makeup, I just have been loving my makeup so much and it's hard to pick a favorite makeup look because like, there's so many different colors and techniques involved in each and every single look that it's really hard to pick a favorite. Wow, I'm so bright. Hold on. <laughs> there, that's better. It's really hard to pick a favorite, but yeah, right now like my favorite looks that I've done happen to be like the green ones, the purple ones like those are some colors that i've really been into and also anything sparkly so i'll just put a few photos on the screen um i just love sparkles okay moving on what beauty advice would you give a beauty lover slash makeup artist slash beauty influencer don't be afraid to literally practice a technique until you get it right and also even if you're not necessarily interested in going online and becoming like a youtube influencer but you just want to learn how to do makeup just like get into the habit of taking photos from different angles of your makeup look so you can see what different parts of your makeup look look good and what parts look bad because when you're looking straight into the mirror 
you can't really see as much as you would see if you're like looking down and you take a photo from above or if you like are looking to the side and you're taking a photo from that angle it's really I think a good idea to really be involved in angles and really know how your makeup looks from a particular angle or from a particular point because what's really interesting is that other people can see that but you cannot always see that yourself so that's something that i'm actually working on right now i'm really trying to make sure that my makeup looks good from all angles instead of just you know full on but yeah that is the end of this tag there are 12 questions but i really rambled for so much thank you so much kelsey for coming up with this tag i absolutely loved doing it and i'd highly suggest that you guys check her out as well i'll put her information down below and i'll also put her like handle on the screen so you can see um where you can find her but uh with that i hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting and i will see you all next time bye guys